In Creo Parametric, you can use ProProcess for Assemblies to document the fabrication process for an assembly. In this video, we are going to start documenting our process plan. In the previous two videos, we created the process plan and then made some of the different process steps. Let me orient you to the model. This is the original base assembly that we started out with. I'm going to change windows to the process plan that I started making. Here we are on step one. I did that in the first video. Let me go to the menu manager. I will choose play steps and then go to next step. This was step two. Sorry for the views moving around a little bit. And in the second video, I created steps three, step four, step five, and step six. And in the meantime, I've created the other steps for this process plan. I'm just going to step through them very quickly. They're just repeats of what I had done previously, where I had moved components around in the explode state and used the various different assemble steps or general steps or disassemble steps. So anyhow, just showing you what those different steps look like in terms of what we're creating. Oh yeah, I also threw in one other final step where I created a fabrication unit to represent the packaging for this assembly. Anyhow, our point is to create a drawing that shows the process plan. And I'm gonna show you what the finished result will end up looking like. Let me go to a window with a drawing. So here we have sheet one, and sheet one has a smart table that lists all the different steps in the process plan. And then on the subsequent sheets, we have an exploded view of the particular steps and showing the bill of materials for the components in that step. And so here you can see what some of those different steps look like. But with a process plan, the heart of the drawing is the format that you use to create the drawing. So in this video, I'm going to concentrate on creating a drawing format for this. So let me go to a window that has a format started out. And this already has some of the graphics for the border of the sheet and for some of the titles and some of the different notes. This is all just regular stuff in terms of drawing format creation. In other words, you're just gonna sketch lines to represent some borders and throw in some tables and some different notes. I have sheet one started out over here, and then I have sheet two. Let me jump back to sheet number one. The first thing that I am going to do in here is add some of the Creo Parametric system parameters as notes in order to automatically fill in some information. So let me zoom in over here. You can see that we have sort of like a title on top of our A size sheet format. And we have one area where we want the name of the model filled in. Well, to put that in there, let me go to the annotate tab. And then from here, I can create a note. And for the location of the note, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Later on, I can go back and refine everything, but let's put it right about over here. And then for this particular note, I want it to go to the model and extract the model's number and then put it in here. So to do that, I will use ampersand, which means grab a parameter. And in this case, it is going to be a system parameter, one of the ones that automatically comes inside of Creo Parametric. And the name of that parameter is, let me choose model underscore name, and then I will left click. And you'll notice that the model name, it kind of changed the formatting and shows up in a darker text. Now I can adjust the position of that note exactly where I want it to be. So this means that it'll grab that and put it in there. The next one that I'm going to fill out over here will be the name of the drawing or rather the drawing number. So let's create a, another note and oops, let me uh, hit the note command. Let me place it right about over here. And this one will be ampersand and the system parameter is dwg underscore name 
and let me deselect. In this case here, it automatically filled in the name of my drawing format. That's okay. When I use this as the basis for a drawing, well, it's going to grab the name of the drawing itself. Okay, then there's a little area for the revision. Hey, if you're using wind chill, you might use the wind chill parameters like ampersand PTC WM revision, but I'm not going to fill that in because not everyone here is using wind chill. And then we have page blank of blank. And so the parameters I want to fill in here will be current sheet and total sheets. So let's do that. Let's put in a note. Now I'm just going to again just eyeball it right about there. Let's put in ampersand and current sheet and by the way i'm using all caps you don't have to use all caps i just like doing that you'll notice that it changed it to the number one let me see if i can grab it here and just adjust its position and then let's throw in a, another note and again i'll just eyeball it and reposition it later this one will be ampersand total sheets and then deselect and then put in the number two because my format currently has two different sheets in here. So that is the first step. I've got these different system parameters filled in. And as I showed a few minutes ago, I want to have a table that automatically extracts all the different steps from the process plan. So let's create a table that does that. I will go to the table tab and for the columns that I want in here, I'm going to put in a 6x3 table. So I'll move my mouse over until 6x3 is highlighted. Then I will left click and then I will position it roughly on the sheet. Again, I'm just like eyeballing it right now because later on I will go back and make some changes. Let's see, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to change the width of the columns to correspond with what I want to fill out in these cells. So I'll position my mouse over the cell. Let me tap right so that the row highlights. Tap right once more so that the column highlights. Now I will left click in order to select that column. I can right mouse click and hold and go to width. And for the column width, you can either do it in drawing units or the number of characters. And I have a better handle on how many characters I want to be in there. So let's change that to four and hit the enter key and then click OK, and the first one adjusts. Let me repeat the process. Select that one, right mouse click, and go to width. And for the very next column, this one is going to have the description of the step. When I was creating the process plan, I would write in words like assemble the condenser or disassemble the fixture, stuff like that. That's going to be in the second column, so I want this one to be a bit wider. Let's change it to 30 characters and then click the OK button. And now I'm just going to repeat that process, adjusting the columns for the next few ones. So let me speed through that. All right, that is good to begin with. And I can grab the table and I can reposition and later on I can go and refine the position of the table even more. Let's now fill in the different headers uh, cells. And so in the first one here, I'm going to put the step number. So let's type in step. And then in the next one, let's put in description. And then we'll have the part number. And then we'll have the quantity. I'll just put in the abbreviation QTY. And right now I'm not bothering to format uh, the justification or text height or any of that other stuff. You can do that on your own. And then in the last cell, let's put in here the cost. Okay, so that is a good start for the table. But the important thing here is that we want to put in a repeat region that will automatically extract information. Let me get rid of my drawing table tree or my drawing tree. Let me just make this wide enough so I can see. So let's start off by creating a repeat region. And this is actually going to be a nested repeat region. So I'm going to create a, an outer repeat region and then create a repeat region within there. So let's go to repeat region. And I'm going to add a region. And it's going to be a simple region. It's going to go from this cell here 
to this other cell. You can see it outlined in red. That's good. I will click the Done button to get out of the Menu Manager. Now I can start double clicking in the different cells to fill in the parameters that I want to have in here. So I'll double click in this cell and here we have the report symbol. If you've ever set up a bill of materials, you're probably used to using ones like ASM. If you've done these with family tables, you have FAM. If you do cabling, you've probably used HARN. So you can see that we have a bunch of different parameters in here. The ones that we're going to use for the process plan start out with PRS. That stands for process. So I'll go to the process and then we're going to get the step number and put that in the first cell and I'm going to double click in the next cell. Be aware that the text is going to overlap on each other. You can always see what the contents are later on by selecting the cell and going to contents. But let me double click in here. For the description, I'm going to have the process step and then DESC. That's that description that I wrote. Okay, I'm going to skip over part number and quantity for now because that is going to be in the nested repeat region. I'll create that in a moment, but let's put in the time estimate. So I'll double click in the cell and this will be process, step, and then user defined. And the name of the parameter is time estimate. And so that'll appear in that cell. And then let's go to the last cell. That'll be process, step, user defined, and then cost estimate. And just one other thing to show you, if you want to control the number of digits that appear in these different cells, you can right click on it and then go to properties and it opens up the dialog box. Then you can put an open bracket and then a decimal point and the number of places that you want this reported to, and then the close bracket. So that's good, let's click the OK button. And so now we've got that formatted the way that we want it to be. And then in order to go out to the model, or excuse me, to the process plan and grab all the components for that particular step, we're going to need a nested repeat region. So let me go to repeat region, and then I'm going to add a repeat region, and it's going to be a simple one going from this cell to this cell over here. So now you see the box within the box. And now we can go into this particular cell and then put in here, this will be the process step component name. And it'll be a little hard for me to click in this other cell here. Let me make sure I'm getting it and double click. This will be the report quantity just like a bill of materials. So that's good for setting up my repeat region. I know it's a little cluttered over here. Later on in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can sum up the time and the cost columns. And in order to do that, I'm going to merge some cells. Let's merge. And right now it's set to rows and columns. And I can set it to column if I want to, and I can just merge this cell over to this cell over here. Let me zoom in and zoom out to repaint. And let me hit the middle mouse button a couple times, get out of the menu manager. And then in the final cell over here, I will double click and let's put in the word totals. And that's good. Now maybe I'm gonna center justify that one just because it is across multiple different columns. So that is good for setting up sheet number one. Let me jump over to sheet number two. And the system parameters are already filled in on this sheet. I don't want to repeat that process because I have already done that uh, at the beginning of this video. The first thing I'm going to do in here is that I'm going to put in a couple of single cell repeat regions because at the top of every sheet, I want to have the number of the step listed in here and the name of the description for the step listed in this particular cell. And so right now there are a couple tables already in here. Let me go back to my drawing tree. Here we have table one, it's the one down at the bottom and table three. These are just single row, two column cells. 
uh, and the divider between the cells has been blanked. But let me put in a repeat region. Let me go to the repeat region command and I will choose to add a repeat region. It'll be of the type simple and it's going to go from this cell to the very same cell. So that's good. And now I'll repeat the process. I'll create a repeat region going from this table cell to that very same table cell. So now I've created two other repeat regions that you can see outlined in red. Let me double click in this cell. And in this one, we're going to put process. And rather than using step like we did for the summary table, we're going to use the parameter above for active step. It'll go out to whatever's the active step and then report its information. And so in this particular one, I want the number of the step. That's good. And for this particular particular cell, I'm going to put in the process active step and then its description. So that's good for that one. All right. The very last thing that we're going to do in the format is going to be a bill of materials table. So I'm going to create a bill of materials for this particular step. Let me go to the table drop down and I'm just going to make a four by two table and then place it about over here. And now I'm going to quickly change the sizes of the columns and type in the headers for you. All right, for my particular bill of materials, I made a four character wide first column for a find number. And then the next one I made 25 characters wide for the part number. And then a 20 character wide column for the part description. And then a four character wide column for the quantity. So with that now, let's create our next repeat region. And I will choose the add button and create it from this cell over to this cell over here. That's good. You can see it outlined in red. In the first one, we're going to put the report index. And in the last cell, let's do the report quantity. And then for the other two cells in this particular one, let me double click and I'm going to put the process active step and then the component and then the name. And then in the last one, I'm going to double click and this will be the process active step and then component. And this one will actually be, you could use name. Maybe you're going to have a special parameter for description. I'm going to use user defined and these parts should have a parameter called description in them. Let me use that particular value. And so that is the repeat region for the table. Let me grab this and then move it and adjust its location because I want to have a nice big space in the middle for the different exploded views of each individual process step. And let's take a look at a few last formatting steps for the drawing format. First off, I created a table on sheet one with some repeat regions. Let's go to the table tab and then choose repeat region in order to set the attributes. I'll click on attributes. Now it prompts me to select a region. I'll start with the outer region and for the attributes, I'll set it to no duplicates. You can do recursive if you want, but I find that just doing a flat one should be fine. Let me hit done return and let me repeat the process for the inner loop. Let me even zoom in a little bit, make sure that I am getting that inner nested repeat region. And I will choose no duplicates once more and click done return. So that's good for the attributes. Let's also set a few other different things for the table. I'm going to click on the table in the drawing tree and then right click on it to bring up the pop-up menu and I will choose wrap text. And you can see that it looks like the columns got a lot wider, but they will just automatically when I create a drawing based off of this. But one other thing to set for this one, there's a lot of information that's going to be in this table. I'm just going to adjust the text style from the default height. I want it to be a little smaller, just get a lot of information in there. Let's change that to 0.1 and click the OK button. 
So that is good for sheet one. Now I will go over to sheet two and repeat a few of those steps. Let's go to repeat region, attributes, and select the repeat region and change it to no duplicates and then hit done return. And once again, I will select the table. I know it's the last table in here. Right mouse click and choose wrap text. And now this table is set up. So there you have it. That is how you set up a drawing format for a process plan drawing. And in the next video, I will actually make the process plan drawing.